Good evening again. <laughs> so um, this evening I'm going to be sharing the so far God's voice, and I'm going to be um, using some resources that I use for the sharing. This this book here is called The So Far. It's from Harlan Alpicker. It's a Messianic rabbi. And um, it's called The First Instrument of God's Voice so far. Such, uh, Lenore has re- recommended it to me, and I got it. And as you can see, it's tabbed, and there's a lot of highlights. So it, it's, a, it's a really good, excellent uh, little book. There's a lot of information in it. I'm not going to cover a lot. I just want you to know that I'm going to be reading out of this. And then also, I have this Holy Bible. It says Holy Scriptures. This is a Jewish Bible, so I ordered it um, because um, I heard the Messianic rabbi, they were talking, and um, they wanted something for Jewish people to come to know Jesus. So they put it in, they, they made, they, it, it's the Bible, yes, but they translated it in a Jew, in, for Jewish people. So I'm going to be reading out of this as well. Where's my paper? Oh, I left my paper. <laughs> Bless you, bless you. Okay, so okay, so the first thing that I'm going to uh, speak about is. The origins of the shofar, as all you, as everyone has seen and heard, the shofar um, is is um, different shape and it makes a beautiful sound. So the origins of the shofar is the ceremonial instrument of Judaism. <clears throat> it was not prim- primarily used. Oh yes, please, thank you. Um, It was not primarily used as a musical instrument. Its purpose had more to do with making of an announcement or proclamation of what was to follow. The shofar is the only Hebrew cultural instrument to survive until now. It is mainly used to worship Adonai and to invoke his help during times of of warfare. So when you hear this so far, something that, according to uh, Mishnah, the set of teachings and commentaries on the Torah that formed the basis for Jewish law, two different types of so far were used in the temple. One made of an ibex horn, and I'll be showing some pictures um, of some of the horns that are used. Its bow was ornated with gold and, and was founded at Yom Teruah, which is Rosh Hashanah, a Jewish New Year festival, and during the Yovo, which is Jubilee Day. And the one made of ram's horn. Its bow was ornated with silver and was founded on days of fasting. Can you put this slide, please? So, thank you. Or did it move on? So, slide two basically says, we do not blow the shofar. We sound it. We sound the shofar because it reminds us of the sound of God's voice. Not moving. What if you click on the picture here? No? Okay. So, um, the so far is generally a round horn, but it can be made, it can be from any of the kosher animals. Um, and kosher is a Hebrew word, literally means fit. So, kosher is, um, means fit. The law of kosher defines the Foods that are fit 
for consumption for a Jew, as well as the ritual items that are fit to be used. Kosher animals include animals or mammals that chew their cud and have split food. So it can't be from any other animal. It has to be from um, a kosher animal, which is, you know what the cud is, right? It's like they're just chewing. And <laughs> so um, now the so far cannot be made of one animal. It cannot be made of a cow's horn. Because we do not want to remind God of the golden calf incident. Now, it doesn't say because God will remember it, but we don't want to remind him of that. So we will not, um, it will not be of a cow's horn. Okay? So that's the origin of the so far. The biblical overview, which there's many, many scriptures um, to show that that the shofar is God's voice. I'm going to give you two for right now because of lack of time. But um, the first instrument of God's voice. Oh, good. Oh, if you could go to pay, uh, slide 10. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are the animals or the the horns that are able that we're able to use. So yeah, go there's an ibex, an horn, a big horn sheep, a gazelle, an African kudu. I think I have the African kudu. <laughs> and uh, that remember we cannot use the cow and it reminds God we don't want to remind God of the golden calf. Says, so the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf, which Aaron made. Exodus 32, 35. Okay, what slide is on? Okay. Okay. So, this, so if you have your Bible and you want to go to Exodus 19, um, verse 9, you can and you can follow. I'm going to be reading out of... Um, the Jewish Bible. It's uh, Exodus 19. And I'm going to go ahead and begin on in verse 9. <clears throat> it says, Adonai said to Moses, I am about to come to you in a thick cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to Adonai. Adonai said to Moses, Go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their clothing. Be ready for the third day. For on the third day, Adonai will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You are to set boundaries for the people all around, saying, Be very careful not to go up onto the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain will surely be put to death. Not a hand is to touch it, but he will surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it is an animal or a man, it will not live. When the so far sounds, they may come up to the mountain. Then Moses went down from the mountain to the people, consecrated them, and then they washed their clothing. He said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not draw near your wives. In the morning of the third day, there was thundering and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and the blast of an exceedingly loud so far. All the people in the camp trembled. They weren't even at the mountain yet. They were still at the camp and they heard that. Then Moses brought the people out of the, the camp to meet God. And they stood at the lowest part of the mountain. Now the entire Mount Sinai was in smoke because Adonai had descended upon it in fire. The smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. The whole mountain quaked greatly. When the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him with a thunderous sound. 
So God already, He already had sounded the, the so far. His, his voice already was, was, um, was heard and they weren't even at the mountain yet. So that's how loud His voice is. And, um, and he, and when Moses talked to him, see verse 19, when he, when Moses spoke, God answered him with a thunderous sound. Can you imagine? Moses hearing God, <laughs> I can't even imagine. But anyway, okay. so that's, that's that verse right there. And then um, Hebrews, uh, you can go to uh, slide 11, please. Okay, and then we can go to Hebrews 12, 18 through 21. Okay, Hebrews, Hebrews 12 to 21. And uh, God's voice is described as an awesome, so far the last. So you can um, go there and read with me. For you have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and to a blazing fire, and to darkness, and gloom, and storm, and to the blast of a so far, and a voice whose words made those who heard it beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am quaking with fear. I can't even imagine Moses. He, he saw the Lord face to face. He spoke to him, and he was quaking in fear. So, so the sound of God's voice is... It's powerful. Uh, let's see. Okay, and then also I did go to um, a website. It's, it's called One for Israel, and it had this little blurb in it, and I wanted to read this to you because I thought it was so um, something that I could share right now. It says, So far and trumpets in Scripture have many connotations and are mentioned almost 80 times in different contexts. These are the ones, these are, these are how they're mentioned. Summoning, summoning the tribe to the door of the tabernacle, getting ready to up tent and move on as a warning, an announcement, inaugurating a new king, building, event, or era, as a battle cry, a victory shout, or the sound of rejoicing. Through the sound of it so far, God calls his people to Turn their mind's attention back to Him, back to heavenly matters. So, you know, when I had been sounding this so far, we're out there, we're in the back and we're eating and um, we're fellowshipping. But I want to be able to just, when I hear the sound of this so far, it's time for the Lord. It's time for those heavenly, heavenly things that uh, we want, we want from God, right? So, um, so um, that's what really. Uh, touched my heart was to turn our mind and and attention back to him, back to heavenly matters. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. Oh, um, summoning the tribe to the door of the tabernacle, getting ready to up tent and move on. That's number two. As a warning, an announcement, inaugurating a new king, or building an event, some type of an event as a battle cry, a victory shout, or the sound of rejoicing. And that's it. Okay, you're welcome. Okay.
Okay, so we're still on biblical o- overview, and um, the so far was and will be founded for the following 16 reasons. That, what I just read was from a website. I wanted to give you um, 16, um, there's 16 actually um, uh, reasons for sounding there so far in the, in the book. I'm not going to read every one of them because um, there's just it's too much. The, the ones that I am going to read um, are number four. It's to signal the assembly of the truth. Whoever you, whenever, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. God will fight for you. And that's in Nehemiah 4, 2. 20. Thank you. And number five, a warning. Number 10, 9. When you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpet then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and and be rescued from your enemies. Number six, in the middle of battle, Zechariah 9.14. It says, Then the Lord will appear over them. His arrow will flash like lightning. The sovereign Lord will sound the trumpet. He will march in the storms of the south. And the Lord Almighty will heal them. Now, for some reason, um, I pick those because for me, when we gather in the evening on Thursday, Father God is summoning the truth. He's gathering the truth. He wants us to know what to do when we go home, when we are in our battles at home. That's what um, that's what spoke to me when I was reading reading those um, those scriptures. So think of it when you come, when you come, and the Lord has a word from the Lord. It is learning how to battle when we go home. Um, and he's mentioned that before. This is the time for battle because you know what? No one, no one is free from 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 any type of war, spiritual war. I mean, it's all spiritual, right? So um, that's that's what spoke to me. The the Hebrew gematria is a n- numerical significance of the number sixteen means love. The sound of so far shows us the love that Adonai, the Lord, has for his children. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to go into the so far significant shape. So the shape of the so far tells us something about how we must approach God. When we look at a so far or round horn, we see something very significant. It is rough, bent, and twisted. Can you put it on the top? Its rough exterior and cro- crooked form depicts our growth as beings who are coarse and misshapen through life in a world plagued by sin. Though we are deformed spiritually, we have purpose. Sanctified by the atoning blood of Yeshua, our imperfect lives can become instruments of praise and glory. So, bent and bowed, or bowed. As we so far, we bend and bow low, bow low before the Lord in homage and reverence. In the harvesting of the so far, the very strength and pride of the animal is removed, it's cut off. The animals are then tanned and cared for because they are rendered helpless and unable to defend or protect themselves. Right, Dusty? I actually had another slide, um, but I had to remove it um, because of some um, technical difficulties. <laughs> but if you could imagine the animals that 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 they're chosen for this so far. Their, their strength, their pride is cut off. And then, then they're pinned. In the harvesting of this so far, the very strength, okay, uh, I'm sorry, I was going to read it. Uh, yeah. 
the very strengthened part of the animal is removed and cut off. The animals in our pen didn't care for because they are rendered helpless and unable to defend or protect themselves. When we approach God, our pride and the very essence of anything that would exalt itself over His place of authority in our lives must be removed until we are humbled and completely, completely dependent upon Him. So, uh, slide 14, please. So, if you think about it, we're before the Lord. Everything is removed. Everything that we think is our strength, it's gone. And we're just there. And He will not leave us alone. When we remove everything that we think is our strength, He's not going to leave us alone. That's when He says, you know what? I'm going to strengthen you. I will give you what you need. I will take care of you. I have penned you. You know, he, he, the, the animals are penned when their horns are taken, but He will pen us. He will be close to us. Um, the next slide. And then uh, 16. <clears throat> Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. James 4 10. We too must be broken before our Lord and King as we approach Him to hear His voice. Now, there's a lot of scripture. I'm not going to read it, but I will give, give you the, um, the scripture so you can go home and you can. Um, Read, read if you um, during your your prayer time. Psalms twenty four, verse three and five, verse three two five. I'm sorry. Psalms thirty four, verse eighteen and nineteen. Psalms fifty one, verse seventeen, and Psalms fifty one, verse nineteen. We cannot approach the Lord with a haughty or arrogant spirit. We must be humble and broken, just like the sounds that come from the shofar. We must be a humble instrument of the Lord. Luke 20, 18, and Isaiah 57, 15. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. Uh, the Psalms? Oh, uh, Luke 20, 18, and Isaiah 57, 15. Okay. Now, um, we finished the biblical overview, so now, um, sounds of God's voice. Uh, slide 17, please. There's seven of them, but I'm only going to be reading uh, concerning the last one through the man of, through the voice of man. God has given us the so far as a powerful tool to use in warfare against our adversary. It symbolizes the sound of God's voice. When the so far is sounded, it may mean God is sending us physical help, spiritual help, such as angels, or God himself is coming to rescue us. Oh, praise God. God's voice can also be heard in these seven ways. So these are the seven ways. Wings of the cherubim, out of the fire, through the thunder, with a voice from heaven, with a voice from a cloud, with a voice like the sound of the trumpet and then through the voice of man. So, through the voice of man. So, we, we all know Genesis 1, 27. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. He created us in, in His image. We are human. We are woman. There's a man. He created us. We all know that. We've heard it many times. So, um, we are 
So you see today, whether you can sound us so far or not, you are God's voice. Since we are made in God's image and likeness, as believers in Messiah Yeshua, we can command the blessings of God through our obedience to His Word and with our voice. Our voice is the voice of God when we are walking in obedience to Him. So, you know, before, before when I, uh, when I was uh, studying and learning and reading, I would just say, Lord, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And it was my flesh, right? My flesh was saying, don't do it. Why are you going to do that? But no, I kept, and I kept countering that. No, I'm going to do this, Lord, for you. I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share. Whatever you give me, it's for you. And, you know, we never, ever want to do something that, that we think is scary, of course, or we think that we can't do it. But God knows that we can. So in our obedience, we are His voice. We are uh, speaking what He wants. So I, I just spoke volumes to me. And uh, let's see here. We must always remember that when the shofar is sounded, it is the sound of innocent blood. An innocent animal died to produce the shofar. At one time, innocent animals were killed so that people could use their horns as shofar. Today, the horns are harvested and the animals are left alive. We must keep in mind that horns are not like antlers. They never grow back. When the horns of an animal are taken to produce so far, the animal is completely defenseless because it means a protection and defense has been stripped away. Excuse me. Nice. Slide 18. And that's the uh, picture again. We must understand that the voice of God is our protection and defense. If we try to survive in this world without God's protection, we will be defenseless just as the innocent animal is that gave up its horns to become so far. We also must understand that the voice of God who became flesh and dwelt among us is our defense. Yeshua is that voice of God and it is He and He alone that is our defense. Innocent blood was spilled and called out to God whenever an animal gives of itself to be sacrificed for our sins. Innocent blood has a voice. And when it said that, I, what came to my mind was um, the babies that are aborted. God hears that innocent blood. Um, they gave an example here of remember the story of Cain and Abel. God asked Cain where his brother Abel was, and Cain replied, Am I my brother's keeper? God replied, What have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. We need to remember the substitute sacrifice that God sent to pay for our sins. His son, Yeshua, is the one who died for our sins when his innocent blood was shed on Calvary. The, show, the call of the so far should be used just as a prayer, just as prayer and fasting is when we beseech God for answers to the issues of life, just as we use our voices to cry out to our Lord. We can also use the so far to cry out to the Lord. The so far is a weapon of war to the adversary. The sound symbolizes the power of our God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When we sound the shofar, we scatter and confuse the enemy. The enemy cannot tell whether it is a man, an angel, or God's voice itself. Praise the Lord. Satan cannot take the, the chance that it's not God's voice. One day soon, 
we will once again hear the sound of the shofar and know that God's promises are coming to pass as He sends His Son Yeshua to come for His bride. Slide 19. Make preparation, ready or not. Here He comes. Are you ready to hear the sound of the shofar? Amen. And the last thing that I wanted to uh, kind of mention was um, you know, uh, back in the day, <laughs> um, if some of you can remember, you know, when we had um, an American flag, you know, and it was out of service, um, they would, you couldn't just throw it away, right? You had to, you had to take care, you know, take care in how you dispose of it. And um, the same goes with the shofar. According to Jewish tradition, a shofar that becomes damaged or cracked cannot be repaired. It must be removed from service and buried. So the significance of the shofar has shown me a lot that not to take what I do for granted or, you know, just because, you know, when you, when I sound this so far, it's not to make a noise, it's, but it's to show that, God, I'm ready, I'm here, I'm hearing you, I'm going to hear you, and, um, and let him just speak to us or speak to me. So that's the, the, the sharing that I had, and I hope um, you learn, as I did, and um, that's it. That's awesome. You know, when we first thought of uh, bringing the new so far and doing that so far, uh, that has always meant, oh, since I, I began, since I started my journey and my walk with my father, so the so far meant a lot to me, but I never knew how to use it, how to, I tried, and, and my sister gave me um, a, a little so far, and, and I'm trying and I'm trying, and so this book has helped me to do some exercise, so I learned how to go to so far, but I haven't gotten a thought out of it yet. Not yet. You know, he gives us gifts. He can do it. Rose can do it. I cannot. I cannot. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying. I'm going to keep on trying. One of these days, I'm going to come here and I go, that's fine. As long as I get a sound out, I'm going to be rejoicing, amen? Because um, I love, I love to, uh, I, I had a lot of notes in this book of myself, but I had some sheet. We first ordered this book that I read. But did you know that, um, the Sephar is used a lot in worship, and the very first time the word worship, worship appears in the Bible is uh, when uh, Abraham was going to take Isaac to Mount Moriah, and um, he was going to take Isaac to Mount Moriah, and Isaac told uh, uh, Abraham, wait a minute, uh, and this is paraphrased Lenore, said, wait a minute, um, he said that. Uh, You've got the knife and you've got the fire and um, you've got the wood. Where's the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? And then he said, um, he said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for his burnt offering. And even though he was speaking present at the present, but he also was foretelling the coming of Jesus because he said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb, who says to the lamb, Jesus, for a burnt sacrifice. So he was, he was talking about Jesus, but yet at the same time he was telling him, he's going to provide, he's going to provide, a, and, and he did, he provided a lamb. So in many, in many things that our sister was saying, I, I love how she picked out just the main points, I wish I I could do that. I never can. I want to get every detail. But uh, she did so awesome, such an awesome job in explaining. And one of the things that she said that just, 
she really uh, spoke to me with it. She said, when she was saying, you know, uh, I didn't take it very, when she was asked, she didn't want to do it. And she didn't want to do it. And she said, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it for him. That's one of the things that I would like us to take very seriously. Because that's one of the things that's lacking in the body of Christ today. Like earlier that I said, you know, you got to come to be a part of something. I wasn't speaking about the general ladies that come. I was speaking the ladies that have committed to a position in the women's ministry. Leadership. That's what I was talking about. I wasn't talking to the general, to the women that just come, no. I was talking about when you come make yourself. Um, our sister Melinda does the administration. She committed to that. So anything with administration, I count on her. Our sister Rose committed to saying a joke. No matter how tiny it is. I, I, believe me, I will hold you accountable for that. I will hold you accountable. Because to me, I don't see the size of the office you're in. I see the commitment that you put in. Not the size of the office. That doesn't matter to me. Titles doesn't matter to me. It's your commitment. And if you commit to be a part of the worship, then you be here to be a part of the worship. If not, don't 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 commit. If you can't commit to be a part of something, don't. Don't come in. He says like that, it will, Father God won't hold you accountable for him. I won't hold you accountable. I will not get upset or anything. No, I'd rather you do not be committed. When I say, what's the thing come in? Come up and only one comes down. Where are the others? They committed. They said the word. Where's their integrity? So if that can't be, then when you come again, then maybe not. But why? Because I'm here to teach you how to be a leader. I'm here to teach you how to show your children commitment. Because the way you, they, they see you as an example. And I love when she said, I don't want to do it, I want, but I did it for him. Don't do it for us, but do it because your word means something to him. So when you're going to do it, do it for him. Because you said it. So you commit. If not, just say, I, I withdraw myself because I can't commit every time. Well, we get sick. I understand that. Our car breaks down. I understand that. But let it be a legitimate excuse. Not just because it's too hot outside. Because so many people want to come hear the word so bad. And they're not allowed to. We have it so freely here. We're spoiled. We are really spoiled. We have it here so freely that we don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want it. No, we, we, we should need it. I love the fact that when she's speaking about the so far, it has a lot to do with worship. Because worship is not something that you just play around with. The commitment of worship. I mean, think of it. Think of it. Worship. Who are you worshiping? The Most High. Shouldn't that be priority? Don't it be priority? But when we think of Him, when we think of because worship is like prayer. When we think of Him, your commitment, your commitment shows how much you think of Him or what you think of Him. It shows on your commitment. If you slack off, that's how much that's how much important you give to God. Because your integrity must mean something. Because Jesus has integrity. That is his character. Right? So when you commit, you commit. And if you can't then say so. No one's going to hold you. He's not going to hold you. He'd rather you say so. He's not going to hold you accountable, but if you commit and you pray wishy-washy, wishy-washy, he's going to hold you accountable. 
And you don't want him to hold you accountable. And I'm speaking to leaders. I'm not speaking to the lane. I'm not speaking to just regular people. No, I'm speaking to leaders here. So when you commit, you better make sure that you want to commit because I want to hold you accountable. That's my job. That's my job as your elder sister, and that's my job as a teacher. That's my job. So 